the former champion, now with his new partner, Ushuan Yi. So this is the section of the draw, this and this is the third quarter. As you can see on the left there, this indicates what section of Johnny the draw we're in, and it's the third players quarter. In the men's doubles uh, from Lebar England, and Corvin, and Sean Vendy have booked their place in the second round. And their opponents from China, the number five seeds, Liu Yu Chen and Ao Xuan Yi. So the English combination consisting of the left-handed Ben Lane and Sean Vendy. This is their third tournament of the year and it's the third time that they've had to play against this Chinese pair of Liu Yu Chen and Wu Xuan Yi in the very first round. Two previous encounters. Uh, they lost in straight games, both at the Malaysian Open Super 1000 event and the Indian Open Super 750, the first two HSBC BWF World Tour events of the year. So, those two previous encounters earlier this year are the only two times these two pairs have met. So Lane and Vendy have never actually won a game, let alone a match, against this Chinese pair. You won the first, what do you choose? So, Liu Chen has chosen ends, taking the captain's role within the Chinese partnership. Yu Chen, and that's not altogether surprising considering he was a former finalist here at the All England Championships. Back in 2017, in his first All England Championship, with, of course, Lee Jun Kuei. Ben Lane, the left hander, is 25 years of age, born in Kingston in Surrey, and they are five places down from their career fight currently 18, but did spend a total of eight weeks across two different spells at 13 on the world ranking. They are making their fifth appearance here as a pair. Only once have progressed past the first round, lost in the second round last year. That was to Hoki and Kobayashi, who then were the world champions. Bendy is 26, born in Kirkwall, the capital of the Orkney Isles in Scotland but moved to England, age seven. So, as far as the Chinese pair are concerned, Liu Yu Chen, he's the former finalist at the All England Championships, 27-year-old from Beijing. And look, he's a tall man, 193. That's just about six foot four. And they're enjoying their ninth week at their career high as a pair of number five. But you saw that Liu Yu Chen has been world number one. That was with, with Li Chun Hui. Ten weeks in total as world number one. Hu Xuan Yi is 29 from Fujian province. And... This Chinese pair are making their first appearance as a pair at the All England Championships. Uh, they've had a good start to the year, semi-finalists at the Indonesian Masters. A couple of quarter-finals as well. Had a disappointing time last week in Mulheim in Germany, where they were the number three seeds and lost in the very first round to uh, Kang and Sio, who then reached the final. So Diraj Gunadre of Mauritius, our umpire for this one, and Jesper Larsen of Denmark will be the service judge.
Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Li Yu Chen and Yu Zhang Yi, China. And on my left, Sid Benny and Ben Lei, England. Ben Lei deserves to be you, Su Chen. Logo. So the Commonwealth Games, silver medalists Ben Lane and Sean Vendy nearest to us, getting this first round men's doubles underway against the number five seeds Liu Yu Chen and Wu Xuan Yi. Well, the English pair thought the, the shuttle had charged one of the Chinese players before it landed out. Oh. That's a good flick serve from Sean Vendy. I do think the first three shots of the rally will be where the English will really trouble the Chinese. I think the Chinese are a little bit predictable, whereas I'd say Lane and Venue have a lot more variation in their first three shots of the rally. Three, one. Quite a nervy start from the Chinese so far. only been playing together for exactly a year. They formed their partnership at the German Open a year ago and actually reached five finals last year, winning three titles. Got promoted from the reserve list to win the Indonesia Super 1000 event, won the Australian Open and the World Tour Finals. In fact, they won their last two tournaments of 2022. Oh. Solid defence by the Chinese bear. English combination making no inroads at all. I do think for me the, the Chinese there's almost two versions of the partnership when Wu is confident and he's comfortable and he's looking like he's um, believing in himself. I think this is often when they have their big results and as you pointed out, Indonesia, I mean that's an incredible one coming from a reserve list to win the whole tournament. But then last week they looked, they almost looked timid, they looked scared and I think they underperformed and it's often when one of them I think isn't quite performing to the level that they can. Well, of course, Liu Yu Chen with his former partner, Li Chun Kuei, not only won the world title when they were playing together and became world number ones, uh, they were also Olympic silver medalists. Yeah, that's a super return of serve, nothing wrong with that from Wu Xuan Yi. Look at that. It seemed to put a bit of side spin on that almost. Yeah, I think he just cut it as he was pulling away and it turned out to be an incredible oh, return. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Did well to get that back. Some very good rally from the English pair. I'd say that's key from what Ben was doing there in regards to mixing up his attack. The stop drop was really troubling the Chinese, and then in the end, it's the power. And I do think a lot of the attack's going to be aimed at Wu. Well, 
the English pair need to be wary of Lu Chen at the front of the court because I think he is a very clever player. We don't get to be world number one, world champion and Olympic silver medalist unless you're pretty good, do you? Now, he's a great player and I say he's very, very different from most of the other Chinese players. He's not the traditional physical um, player. He, as you say, he's more intelligent, he's different. He's had to be because he can't be quite as physical, so he, he reads the game better, he, he moves the shuttle around a bit better. Six, five. Yes, and the reason he can't be that physical is because he's had an ongoing hip problem for years and years. I understand he's had a bit of an operation on his hip, but still lack of movement around the court on occasions. But he doesn't need to move when he can read the game like that. There he is. Do you know, he's uh, got a sister which is an unusual thing in China uh, at the time that he was born, who was also a world champion. She was a world champion in swimming. I bet you can't name many athletes, siblings, that have won world titles in different Five. sports, not just different disciplines, so different sports. Seven, six. Another good stat, Jill. You are Five. definitely defeating me on the stats today, unsurprisingly. <laughs> If any of the general public out there can assist me with any stats to stump Jill, please feel free to send them in. Your in email inbox is going to be flooded tonight. So I, don't, I don't think people are even going to try, because you can't stump you. <laughs> I mean, at Commonwealth, you, I mean, you knew about a million facts about countries I've never even heard of. Say last comment on this. If anybody wants to uh, go on, who wants to be a millionaire and they need phone a friend, I would definitely call Jill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know any answers to pop questions. Everyone has a weakness. <laughs> and this is a good run of points, isn't it? Three straight points for the Chinese pair. Serve. My goodness, how did he get that? Yeah, good aggressive play by the English pair, and it all started with a magnificent flick serve. And in that whole rally, I don't think, Leo, I don't think he hit a single shot. Every shot was aimed at who? And yeah, it was a great flick. Yeah, Ushwani did awfully well to get it back. Yeah, that's a good smash. Yeah, that was massive. I mean, you could hear we could hear it from here how big that smash was. Yeah, and it was good placement too towards the left hip of the left hander. Yeah, every, everything about that that smash was pretty much perfect. and long and it is the Chinese pair that have the advantage at the mid-game interval a two-point advantage for the number five seeds Liu, Liu Wu Shen and Wu Xuan Yi 
Goodness me, look how they tower over their coach. Good serve, so get us on runs as well, yeah, good serve. 20 seconds, 41, 20 seconds. Gosh, that was a lucky net cord. Broke the strings of his racket. 12, 9. There's a lot of flick serves going on in this match, isn't there? Yeah. And I would say uh, that was a great flick, and, uh, and this is one of the things I highlighted no. earlier. I think the Chinese, for me, sometimes can be a bit simple in the first three or four shots, as in very predictable. But that was a fantastic flick, and it caught Sean slightly off guard, and then it put the Chinese kind of not in control, but they had the advantage after that. Yeah, it's landing well in. This Total going, confusion between the two English players. And going back to what you said earlier, Jill, totally, which is almost every single shot that Liu played in that rally was very intelligent. He gave the English nothing and then all of a sudden made the court big. You know, it, tactically, every shot he played was to perfection. And five straight points now for the number five seeds from China. And nine all pulled away. Fifteen, nine. And six straight points. Oh, that's delightful. What a super shot from Sean Bendy. Yeah, it's a great shot there from, from Sean. And before then, he, he's in trouble because look how low he's taking it, but there's such a big gap there because uh, Liu's committed slightly too early, but it's a great shot there from Sean. Got some catching up to do now, English pair. I would say Liu's almost, I feel like the English are trying to not include him in the game because the amount of shuttles he's actually hitting is minimal, but almost every time he's getting the shuttle he's doing something quite impressive with it. I mean that last shot was obviously a comfortable shot, but they're really trying to keep him out of the game because he is the danger man of the Chinese pair. And I totally agree, but the problem is for the English pair, how do you keep him out of the game? Because uh, Liu Chen, he reads the game so well. So he just seems to be in the right place at the right time so often within a match. So it's very difficult to cut him out. And I think at the moment the, the English are almost, obviously not in that rally, but in the, some of the other rallies, being forced to lift. But who's hitting it so hard at the moment that it's tough for the English to contend with that on the defence. So at the moment they're struggling a little bit, but you know it, it's not one-sided at all. I just say it's a few points difference. That's all it is at the moment. The English are still well, well within this game. But again there, made a fantastic move. He saw that the English were in trouble, stepped up. Yeah, he steps forward here, and then he's on top of it, and it's impossible for Ben to get that back. Once again, because Liu's using so much variation in his shots, you, you can see the English, you know, they're, they're unsure what's happening, who's moving where, and they're a very well-established pair. But there's so much indecision because of the variation from Liu at the moment. Wait. 12, 18. 
Well, it's a bit of a mountain to climb, six points adrift. For Lane and Vendy. Good drive serve from Vendy. This is what I mean for the English. This is the advantage they have in regards to they have the quite unique variation in the first three or four shots. We haven't maybe seen it enough yet. Um, maybe we're going to see it more now. Yeah, it's clever placement. Oh, the smash from Rushwani. Right at Ben Lane. Having very... moved him. Straight at him. well to get that because it almost looked like he'd he'd left it slightly you see that last second reaction yeah he wasn't expecting the flat drive at all was he Sudden, I feel like the momentum swing, the English, you know, right back in it. It was quite a one stage. It Chinese did sneak away, and now a few cheap points. And there's only two points in it. 17, 19. Concentration lapsed slightly from the Chinese, maybe, and they've now let the English right back in. And he's gone off to change his racket. He's back on court. Oh! oh. Almost got in each other's way. Ah, oh, that's a pity. After running off to change his racket. Off he goes. Picks up a new racket. Back on court. And that's the big reason why you should always leave a racket out, just because for that situation, we heard Sean Miss hit the shot really early on in the string went. And if you're trying to play a rally, especially in men's doubles with a broken string, you're, you're going to get everything hit at you, and it's so hard to keep the rally going. Yeah. So three game point opportunities for Liu and Wu. a lucky net ball for Ben Lane, especially as he broke the strings 18, of his racket. 20. Yeah, it was a good bit of fortune. I have to say, who's serve? He, it's a lot more of a tumble serve than I first thought, because when I was watching that very closely, he puts a lot of spin on his serve. So still two more game point opportunities for the Chinese pair. All the pressure. Oh, that's gone along with the back line and that's a disappointing way for the home pair to lose the opening game on a service error from Sean Vendy. 21-18 confirms the umpire opening game to Ilu Wu Shen and Wu Xuan Yi in 18 minutes.
what's going to happen on this hand. It's going to get shorter. Yeah, so keep moving around each other and then you'll get one. You'll get one shorter. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to stay committed first on the, on the returns. That's a well great return against them, yeah. Get committed and get up. Yeah, the, the back player's got to be right behind. Yeah. They're not hitting any tram line stuff, so as we turn, the back player just right down. This is empty hall, we expect to go on. Quote yeah. one, twenty seconds. Quote one, twenty seconds. So one game to the good, the number five seeds, Su Uchen and Wu Shrani. And what can the home pair do in response to that? Ben Lane and Sean Vendy. Did you catch any of the coaching there, Chris? Could you hear any of it? To be honest, not really. It was the only bits I heard was just a big focus on the ends. That was a brilliant drop shot. Just because the big focus on the ends, it does seem to be driftier maybe than previous years. To have a big focus on for the English, the shuttle's going to hold up slightly. Um, and when they're lifting, they have to be a little bit careful because the shuttle is going to continue to uh, to keep going in that direction. So you've just got to be careful you don't lift out. And, but I didn't hear much else just because you know, when it swapped, that's what I caught. And unfortunately, my Chinese is not so good. Oh, he took that. I thought that was going wide. Nice idea. Wrong execution. One of the things I heard Nathan Robertson saying was that they're not playing the tram lines on the return of serve, the Chinese pair. So he was urging the player behind the server when the English are serving to stand up closer behind the server to try and close down that mid-court area. Yeah, I would agree. I would say a lot of the returns are controlled. And I mean, there he's tried to push a corner, but I'd say it's quite a poor return. And then who's not covered his line, he's got to move all the way across to fully cover the line, which he's not done. because they were in all sorts of trouble earlier on. between the two English players. Great placement by Lu Shen. I think the shot from Vendy was actually the right shot going over um, because as we've highlighted, Liu, his uh, movement is, is the weaker part of his game. But there, I mean, you can't hit to him. He's too dangerous. You have to make him move because if he has half a chance, his racket skills are so good and he's so clinical and this is why. As you highlight, Jill, you know, he's, he's an Olympic silver medalist and he was world number one with a previous partner. You have to make him move. Yeah, 
Yeah, good work from Ben Lane. awareness there from Liu Yu Chen. Absolutely superb. There's the little softer shot, moves back out. He knows that Bendy is going to play the lift. And then look where he places that angled drop shot. Absolute perfection. My goodness, he's a clever player. They won't get through immediately. Well, from their perspective, they've got to stick with it. And as you were pointing out, Chris, they've got to try and expose Zhu Xuani. He is not a weak player, but he's the weaker of the two Chinese players. Especially in the defence, because, you know, just being honest, Liu's defence is one of the best in the world, if not, Six. In men's doubles at the Five. moment, the best in the world. It's definitely one of the very best. So if you get the chance, you're not going to hit it on him. I mean, in that rally previously that the English won, they had a short lift. He played the most incredible block when he was nearly on the ground. He was, he was in that much trouble. Pushed, there's going to be pace coming back. He didn't chase. He had his racket ready, and then when the shuttle was pushed at him, he just pushed it back. But the English had almost accidentally overcommitted, and they create the gap themselves. And at the moment, I would say it's it's an intelligent match so far, definitely. From, uh, from you. Playing an exceptional rally. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. That was very uncharacteristic. I said that's a phenomenal shot, and then that as well, considering he's not, I wouldn't say he's comfortable at the net. The two shots he played there are incredible. Forehand cross court net followed by a backhand cross court net. Yeah, no wonder he gets the nod of approval from Chen Chi Chu. Yeah, those two shots then were fan absolutely fantastic. I can't help but wonder whether the English pair should be trying to slow it down a bit. I think they're getting drawn in to playing the pace that the Chinese want to play. Yeah, I understand. I know what you mean. It's a difficult one because you're totally right. When there's too much pace in the rally, I would say the Chinese are the better pair. I think the difficult thing is for the English. I think they might feel if they slow it down too much, they might not be able to get through. But it is such a... How's he got that back? That's unbelievable defence. He was in so much trouble. The English were Nine, all over him. Five. So calm and composed, just pushing it back, pushing it back. Yeah, but, but in that instance, you know, the English pair were, were hitting hard at him. And that's where I think if they just put in the block and try and move him forward, because as you've identified, he's not the best mover in the world, Elulu Chen. Oh! 
That's a good flick serve. But no, I would 100% agree. And the difficult thing is, though, when you get that good position, being calm enough to say, do you know what the right shot is to stop it off? Because I would agree with you. If you're just going at pace with Liu, his racket skills, I mean, he's shown throughout this match are phenomenal. If yeah. you're just going to hit hard at him, you know, he can almost stand there with his eyes closed, driving it back. You have to outmaneuver him, and I totally agree. They need to stop it off. Or there was even a rally earlier in the match where they went over him and they put him in trouble. If you just hit to him, he's very good. You have to outmaneuver him. Five straight points for the number five seeds, but that run comes to an end. Service so over. Six, ten. to the mid-game interval Let's with a five-point advantage. Six, the number five seeds from China, Liu Chen and Wu Xuanyi. Yeah, you know, 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 you Well, I suspect we've reached the stage of now or never as far as the English pair are concerned. They have to try and turn this around. In the rally just before the break, Sean's just gone with too much pace. But there's such a fine line. He need, for me, I'd say the English need to hit more fades, which is where the shuttle's dipping. If they're hitting full power and the shuttle's still rising, it's where the Chinese can handle it. That's a great return there. It was a super return of serve, wasn't it? Brilliant. Look at that. Oh, it's just wide. It's called wide. Hey, ten inch, ten inch. Hey, that's too late, isn't it? Yeah. The new challengers are bold. Out. I'm going to be honest. I was a bit surprised that was called out. I thought it oh, was in. Well, I, my reaction was that was brilliant. I think even Liu almost called it late because he turned round and he was quite chuffed with himself that he did yeah. such a good shot. Yeah, clearly in. Thank goodness we have Hawkeye, you know, just for the fairness of the game, because you obviously don't mean to make it, but it's a long distance away from the line judge, and maybe even Ben was just in the way, could the line judge really see it? Seven. That's a better shot there from Sean. Going back to the point you made of slowing the game down, to slow it down by taking the shuttle early and getting the attack rather than just playing with pace, it gives them the chance then to put the Chinese in trouble. Whereas before, when everything was flat and hard, I do think the Chinese are quite a bit better in that area of the game. That's a super shot from Sean Bendy. Since the uh, since the mid mid interval, I'd say the English have produced some very impressive points. So much for my theory that they need to slow it down. That fast exchanges. Incredible rally. Short. Yeah. But I still agree with what you're saying, though, Jill, in regards to, for me, when the English are engaging with the pace, I, I don't feel confident that they can keep the rally going. It, it just feels a bit frantic for me, whereas I feel the Chinese look a lot more comfortable engaging with the pace. If, if the English can almost, they can slow it down to get the blocks in, get the fades in, to get the lift, I just think it's going to be better suited for them. Yeah. 
This is where the English have got to really kind of steady the ship, as it were. They can't afford to give away too many cheap points in this part of the game because then the Chinese can run away with them. shot at the right time even though he's off balance I would say a lot of the lifts in the Chinese I feel like they're quite short but here that's delightful isn't it and it's well spotted from how deep Sean went to to try and get what he anticipated to be the smash it's a great little celebration there from the coach Now you've got to hit it. Yeah, in that situation, Ben did exactly the right thing. Just alerting Sean to the broken his strings, and he was either going to try and get forward or get off to swap his rack here so that Sean wasn't confused if, if Ben ran off or wasn't even on court. Go! That's good placement for the smash. I like that. Yeah, it's a great place, and I would say it's a bit of a strange defensive stance there. He, I don't feel he's really ready, but it was well spotted, really well spotted by Ben. And they're just kind of, you know, they're doing wrong, they've got a good defence, but they're just reacting to what the English are doing on the attack. And it's kind of they're just getting it back and out, manoeuvring them rather than anyone chasing forward and putting the English under a bit more pressure when the English are actually attacking. in it now and that's believable it's very similar to what happened in the first game uh, Chinese got a bit of a lead it was almost looking at they were playing well and then all of a sudden a few points where concentration's gone a miss hit uh, an easy mistake and then all of a sudden it feels like the game's totally changed and the English are right back in six points adrift just a moment to go Four of the last five points. That's good work from Ben Lane. What good a 
athletic play at the front of the court from the left hand. 14, 16. Launching himself towards the net. Look at that from Ben Lane in the effort to take it early. And what was the shot? It was a soft downward shot, set up the rally. I'd say Ben read that, read that incredibly well, but I'd say maybe for almost the first time in the match, Lewis played, he's chosen the wrong option there, he's played the wrong shot. Well, well, well. 15, Just one 16. point, the deficit. And now the Chinese, they look, you know, look almost flustered. They look... That was going out, that serve, you know. Chinese almost look like the pair who are the pair that are actually losing. The momentum has totally changed in the match. They're back level. And this is the thing, when was the last rally that the Chinese actually had the attack? I'd say, you know, the English have attacked well and they're getting through. The Chinese, for me, are too passive in, uh, in the rallies where they're just defending. You can't just defend. Yes, they have a good defence, but the English are attacking well. And they're not getting away with it now, the Chinese. Seven of the last eight points to the English pair. He's, he's not happy. Jangling. 16. There, Ben was almost looking to get on the third shot so quickly, almost lost a bit of uh, concentration on the serve. But now each point here is absolutely pivotal because the Chinese have to get back in their momentum, they have to get the attack. Oh! Came off the frame of the racket. And now, it, I mean, if the score was one-sided as it once was in this in this game. The Chinese would be a lot more comfortable and they wouldn't be making these more comfortable, easy mistakes. The game's That's a great defensive shot. And the English pair, remarkably, are into the lead. Nine of the last 11 points. That's the thing there from all. Totally the wrong shot. Totally the wrong shot. I know earlier in the match he played an incredible one of those, but for me he's got to lift again and go again. And it's the English are just attacking 90% of the time. Almost every single rally the English have got the attack. Yeah, Lu Xuani was keeping his head down so that he wasn't ready, making the English pair wait. Strings went. of the last 12 points. And now just two points away from winning this second game. opportunities this is simply remarkable by Ben Lane and Sean Bendy three opportunities to send this to a third and deciding game it's one game all from 9-15 down to 21-17. That Bendy is extraordinary. Bendy, One of the most 17. remarkable comebacks One that I have all. witnessed. Yeah. Certainly oh, all this yeah. year. Yeah. One game all. 21-17, yeah. yeah. second game. Yeah. And when we do this, yeah. and move off the back of it straight away. Yeah. 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 They're missing now when we're yeah. hustling. Oh, you in the flat. Like, you can't miss it. And then when we press, when it's flat, flat, we press, and then yeah. we get there, and we stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we stop oh. when we're the ones high. Well, when we're, yeah, when, yeah, when we go high. Yeah, yeah, when we played flat. Yeah. And 
it's up here, go for it, yeah? When he's attacking and you get one here. Come out and respond to it all, yeah? Mm -hmm. Expect them to come again when we're going, yeah? We're not changing for what we've just been doing. Yeah? All in together. Yeah. It's good. It's definitely like in the flat. Definitely like a bit more. We're playing too much softening over here. Yeah. No flat. No flat. That's got a move. Oh! Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Play. Well, what a simply remarkable comeback in that second game from 9-15 adrift uh, to win it 21-17, Ben Lane and Sean Vendy. And the momentum, it appears, is still with the English pair. This is why we love sport, isn't it? You just never know. Look down and out. Is he not moving a bit too early when I'm serving? Well, Ben Lane questioning the umpire as to whether the returner was moving before the serve was struck. Not allowed to do that. the frame of the racket I think it was Ben Lane shot and then coming off the frame of the racket just popped up into the hitting zone of Liu Uchen. I know the English did lose the rally but it's before it was probably two maybe three shots before that point they were doing all the right things they're getting the shot coming up they got on the attack now everyone's going to be edgy at the start of this game and it's so important to get on the attack We know that Ben Lane and Sean Vendy have had some wonderful results last year. Uh, they beat the now reigning world champions Aaron Char and So Week in the Commonwealth Games. They've beaten the now world number one, Salfian and Ardianto. Uh, beaten the Commonwealth Games uh, gold medalists, Ranki Reddy and Shetty. Beaten the former world number ones, Gideon and Sukamolio. And beaten the Olympic champions, Li Yang and Wang Chi Lin, all last year. So they had some incredible results, but they never were able to really follow it through to winning tournaments. So we know they can play great badminton. This is a super rally again. That's brilliant. But this is where, for me, I just... It's, it's again, it's like totally different pairs. I wouldn't say that the English are doing much wrong. I'd say the Chinese have started this third game at a much higher level. And it was, I don't know, it was almost like they switched off a little bit in the second game. The, the English raised their level, they got the attack, and the Chinese got complacent, and they became passive, and they just defended. Whereas now, totally different pair. They're being active, they're being aggressive, they're getting the attack. And when they're on the attack, they're phenomenal. Um, and this is why... I don't know, it was almost strange what happened kind of midway through the second game. It was like the, the light bulb just switched off for the Chinese. But can the Chinese keep this going? Because the first, the beginning of this game has been very good. Oh! Oh! Yeah, it's a good return. Yeah, and then a bit of a cheap sort of snatchy mistake. Well, 
it's been 38 years since an English men's doubles pair won the All England semi-final stage. I know we're only in the first round, but if we dispose of the number five seeds, then that wait, it's conceivable that that wait could be over. But I am really jumping ahead of myself here. Well, with badminton, anything is possible. You know, we saw that in the second game. As you said, Jill, the, the difference, I think, at one stage was 15-9. And then all of a sudden, we literally blinked and four or five points happened and it was even. And then all of a sudden, the, the game was over and um, it was 21-17. And it was such a quick turnaround. So anything's possible. The, the reason they defeated Ben there, he's, he's placed it so well. He's put it in such an awkward spot. Watch here with Ben strikes it. It's so wild. He's hit it. Maybe it is a forehand. of Ben Lane at the moment over the last few rallies. But that shot there from Ooh was phenomenal. And this is the thing, if we think how Ooh was at the second, um, near the end of the second game, he was playing the wrong shot, he looked tense, he looked nervous. I mean, that's a phenomenal rally from Ooh. It was, and this is going back to the point I made before the game, I just, I feel like when he's comfortable, when he's confident, he's such a good player, but when he gets flustered, his level is nowhere near the same. They pressurised again on the defence, Ben Lane. And I, and I, before those last few rallies, I wouldn't have said Ben Lane's defence, there was much wrong with it. But they've managed to somehow expose a weakness. off balance he needs to take another step off the net and to cover the line you see it here look at that he's too far off balance look he's too close yeah but i don't think he had an option i think he had to go for it yeah but i think it's the move you're right it's definitely his but the move before he's not he's not made the move he's, he's almost been a bit static but isn't that his style yeah, but it's the reason he's missed it. He's got he's got to be more I know he's not the most active player, but there he's he's got to he's give himself space because yes, he's got exceptional racket skills, but even in that situation, I'd say there's only one player, maybe Setiwan, who could actually have cut that out being that close to the net. What about Sukumolio? Oh! Sorry. He could have. Quite possibly. Maybe also yourself, Jill. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> As his strings are broken, off he's gone, Ben Lane. And the Chinese pair. But that's the thing there. I mean, you can see Liu is absolutely livid. 
because for me that this is the thing I, I struggle to understand who some of the stuff he's done has been incredible and this shot we can't quite see it but he's got an open court he could hit it anywhere he could lift Sean in the corner he could play a net shot and Sean can't kill it because Sean was playing singles and he's made a very simple mistake oh. well they clashed of brackets that's probably what the issue was and they've got to communicate it's such a cheap point at this stage of the game to give away Look at that. That's almost the same shot as he made the error before. And I love to see that with a player. They make an error, and then the next time they have a similar shot, they've readjusted and they make it count. It's, it's, I mean, he's done well to get it. I would say a little bit of fortune on his side, but I think it came off maybe a grommet or something in the end. But full credit, exactly as you said, but I feel like he committed more because more of his movement is going to the side in the correct position he should be in. In the end, in the end incredible cutout. And these are the small differences that can be such a big difference in the end. Wrong of the back line, and it's a five-point advantage. This is the thing we've seen. the mid-game interval at the change of ends here in the deciding game. We've seen this in every game. The Chinese have been leading by almost the same score of four or five points, and the, the English have managed to find a way back. Will they, though, in the final game? Nathan Robertson, the nice in the English pair, that the Chinese pair are not playing everything back to the net and are pushing everything, so that's what they've got to be looking for. Exchanges. Yeah, no doubt in my mind that the Chinese pair are better at these flat exchanges than the English pair. I would agree, and I'd say that's where Liu comes into his own. If you're hearing upward to him, flat is very, very good. to a scoreline of 15-9 again, could we? <laughs> That'd be a good thing for the English, wouldn't it? Oh. Wow, that was... But this is... I don't understand. He does, he does moments like that where he looks so comfortable, so confident at the net. And then we see rallies where... It's not that he has a phobia of the net, but he looks so uncomfortable at the net. It seems such a... Like two totally different players on the court. Because that was incredible. We are edging closer to your 15 9 major. I know. But don't fear it. If that happens. Defense. Yeah. Made 
Liu Yu Chen move the full width of the court. Yeah, he's played the round the head shot, now he's got to get to his forehand net. And that's his lack of mobility, really exposed. I do you feel this is quite a big point, especially for the Chinese, because they really seem to have been struggling when Sean's been serving. So they need to get, need to stop this run before it starts. Racket in frustration. Sean Vendy. But the big thing that again there for me, the Chinese are still passive on the defence. Sean's made a mistake, he's hit the top of the tape. You could say a bit unlucky for the English, but the Chinese they can't just afford to lift because the English are too comfortable with the easy attack. They've at least got to whip them or outmaneuver them or make them feel uncomfortable on the attack. Or better still, the Chinese have to get the attack. What a rally. <laughs> Completely fresh air, it. Bushwani. Longest rally of the match so far. Fifth, 46 thrilling shots in that rally. This is the thing for me with the English predominantly having the attack. I just feel they're gonna get a comeback. They're gonna come back because when you get in the attack, you're in the good position. Missed opportunity from Liu Chen. down they have to get the attack if they get a chance to push they should almost try and play soft to just get the high lift because majority of the rallies when they're getting the attack they are getting through but they're too passive they're giving away the lift too easily That's a different serve coming, isn't it? That was a different signal behind the back. I'd 
can see almost all the English returns now are just getting pushed at Ooze um, body after he serves. He's got a brilliant serve, but I think he's not so comfortable in the returns coming at his body. This is what I mean about the attack. It is crucial. The Chinese have to find a way of getting the attack because their attack's phenomenal. At the moment, everyone's unsurprisingly edgy. It's the very end of a very, very tense match. So important to be getting the attack. You had the chance to go with pace, as in to push one, but he didn't. He got the he got the net. And you can see here, there's such a battle now to get the attack. And it's the wrong shot there from Sean in the end. But he doesn't want to lift, so he's kind of out of options. Eighteen fourteen. Oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. 19, 14. Two points away from a place in the second round. Look at that. Right place at the right time. Perfect racket carriage, perfect preparation, and it just comes exactly to his racket, and then easy finish for him. Superb from Sean Bendy. This is the thing, Sean knows the Chinese don't want to lift. So he's made a move, he's pushed it straight away. Straight away he's chasing in. And then in the end it's an easy kill. Well, I think that was a very efficient kill. Look how steep that was. The push there from Sean Vendy into the net, and it means that there's five match point opportunities for the number five seeds from China. First match point, very well saved. going to see on a serve here. I'm confident we're going to see some kind of variation. In on their second match point opportunity. The number five seeds Liu Chen and Wu Xuani uh, break the hearts of the English fans. Beating Ben Lane and Sean Vendy in three thrilling games. 21 16 in the deciding game in a match lasting an hour and seven minutes. Well, they did it the hard way. And certainly for Ben Lane and Sean Vendy, well, we saw glimpses of why they have so much potential. First time that the English pair have taken a game of their Chinese opponents, and that's a good step in the right direction. And there's the final rally of the match. So there is confirmation of the fact that the number five seeds, Liu and Wu, uh, be Lane and Bendy. 21-18, 17-21, 21-16 in the deciding game.
Well, that concludes the second day of play here in Birmingham at the Yonex All England Championships. It all started at 10 a.m. this morning with the 2021 winner, Liz Zijar of uh, Malaysia, uh, beating Tamasin in two straight games. Then we had a thrilling men's doubles with the world number ones, Alfian and Ardianto, uh, beating the beaten finalists uh, last week in Germany, Kang and Co. 21-19 in a thrilling final game. Then it was mixed doubles and it was a repeat of the Olympic bronze medal match in uh, 2020 Olympics. And it was the two-time defending champions here at the All England Championships, Watanabe and Higashino, uh, that once again came through that. Then a huge upset in the men's doubles because the reigning world champions, the former finalists at the All England, Aaron Chiar and Zoe Eek, the number two seeds, went down to Canando and Martin in just under the hour mark. That was 21-13 in the deciding game. Then it was women's singles and the three-time former champion, Tai Su Ying, looked absolutely wonderful today in beating Kim Ga Ung of Korea in just 33 minutes. And then we had men's singles and Kento Momota, the former champion, he won here four years ago. He's a two-time former world champion. He went down to Kun Widersan in two straight games. And in fact, Widersan had to save to gain points in that opening game. That was a thriller too. And then now uh, we had an extraordinary mixed doubles with Kim and Jong uh, coming from 5-14 down in the deciding game against uh, Mayers and Moore from England before eventually winning it 21-19 in the deciding game. The defending champion, uh, Akane Yamaguchi, in the women's singles, beat the European Games gold uh, medalist, Amir Blickfeldt, in two very comfortable games. That was our quickest match of the day here on court one at 31 minutes. Then we had another mixed doubles and the two left-handers, Seul and Che, beating Go and Lai, also in two straight games. And as we've just witnessed, well, a brilliant fight by Lane and Vendi, the Commonwealth Games silver medalists, but uh, beaten by the number five seeds, Lu Chen and Wu Xuan Yi. So second round action tomorrow, it will be the same time as today, 10 a.m. local time, which is uh, 1000 GMT. In the meantime, from all of us here, and especially from Chris Langridge and myself, Jill Clark, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.